what is going on guys it is me your boy flash jones back again with another video and today we're going to do the unboxing and review of the es44 c4 number 68 39 in the bnsf scheme all right now that being said let's jump right on in to this video all right so Let's go ahead and unbox this baby. Alright, just inside the packing, you get on a sheet of paper. Get a Intermountain's operations guide. It comes with the uh, ESU um, lock sign decoder. Now this will be my first time um, fooling around with anything ESU. I've never used any uh, ESU decoder before, so this will be my first uh, first go around. But I've only heard good things about ESU, so pretty excited. Okay. And then it kind of just opens up like a little book, and I'll let you guys see what all this is as well. And pause it, read it for yourself if you guys want to. Okay. You got this side over here. And on the back, you have instructions on how to uh, remove the shell if need be. All right, so that's all you get as far as in the box. File out to the side, and then we have a beautiful locomotive. Okay, we're gonna unbox this. They got it wrapped in here pretty nicely with the uh, soft plastic. It's completely wrapping the locomotive. It's always a good thing. Slide that right on off. And then we're just going to come in here and get these handrails protectors. All right, that's the first one. It's too early for people to be calling my house. All right. All right, so we're gonna clear all this stuff out the way and then we're gonna continue on with the review. All right, stand by. All right, so now that we got everything out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the closer detail, starting with the conductor side. Okay, you have the 6839 here. Got some, uh, you got some ES44 C4 branding here. You got some um, safety striping running the length of the locomotive. Okay. Um, I know you guys probably will not be able to see this little white sticker, but that little white sticker, um, it's talking about the three MU hoses that are on the front here the main reservoir, the, actuai uh, the actuating uh, line, and the ANR line. Okay. Moving down the conductor side, got some vents up here. Hand rows are nice and sturdy. They're not thin, 
as comparably to maybe Athlon products, but they're very sturdy. Safety tread on the walkways. Okay, got your fuel tank here. Got your fuel caps that are painted red on the sides here. Move it down a little further. Okay, um, 5,000 gallon fuel tank. Got the e-bell right here. Got some BNSF swoosh on the side. Okay, moving down a little further. Got some more uh, vents back here. Got your brake wheel. And um, yeah, and actually I'm gonna see if I can zoom in down here and show you guys some of this truck detail. So right here, got your brake pipe. Oh, I'm sorry, your brake um, your brake cylinder. You got the lines that run down to the other brake cylinder down in here and whatnot. Um, now one thing I don't think a lot of people know about is this pipe here, this uh, this cylinder that runs through here and across to this cylinder here, okay? Um, what it says on there is weight management cylinder, okay? It's the same thing on the front trucks, I just didn't show it. Um, but what it is is that um, realistically on the prototypes of certain ES44s, mostly the uh, ES44 C4s have them, most of the DC versions don't have them because these are a uh, ac traction motors as you can see there by that uh, black sticker um but what it is is that um as these locomotives are running if the uh the computing system ever feels the traction computing system ever feels that the locomotive needs more traction this weight management system will engage and it will literally raise this middle wheel off of the rail a little bit um to put the weight on both the front and rear wheels. So being really specific, say one, two, three, four, five, six. So it'll take the weight off of the entire set of trucks and it'll put the weight on the fourth and sixth sets of wheels so that the locomotive would have more of attractive effort pressing against the, uh, the rails. And there is no uh, traction motor for this wheel. So on the prototype, it's got four sets of power wheels or four traction motors. The middle ones are not powered for this reason. And that's actually very accurate. Okay. So um, I just thought I'd share that because yeah, Intermount has done a awesome job with all of the detail that they have down here. I mean, the fact that they have the tiniest of legible printing on this weight management cylinder you can kind of make it out a little bit. I don't have a magnifying glass, but I know that's what it says. And it says it down here on this one as well. So, like I said, I just wanted to show that, share a little bit of information. Um, and because and Intermountain has done a fantastic job. Okay. And just tilting it up a little bit. There is some, just a little bit of underbody detail, so to say. It's so got some extra lines, pipelines, airlines, and whatnot, miscellaneous lines that run the length of the locomotive. Okay. All right, now taking a look at the rear of the locomotive. Probably zoom out now. Okay. Safety tread on the walkways, like I said before. You got your 3MU. Um, Sets, let me say that again. You got your MU cables on the left and right side, silver tipped ends. Uh, it's a metal KD coupler they got here. Nice touch. Grab irons, um, cut levers, safety chain here in the middle. Grab irons up this on the uh, on the rear of the locomotive and the numbers, the road number. Um, one thing I wish that manufacturers would do is make this chain free hanging instead of just molded because obviously you can see it's not moving it's not free hanging it's uh connected to the entire grab iron area so that's one thing i wish they would do make that chain free floating as you're going down the rails this chain be swinging back and forth and whatnot it is what it is though also you got your mu cable that's yellow down here and oh you can actually see it in the hot one so when they want to mu trains together these white ones that they're plugged into right now are just the dummies. They would go 
red to red or hot to hot. So you would take this yellow line out of the dummy and put it in the hot. And on the other locomotive that it's MUing to, you would connect this one to the hot on that one. Essentially, yeah. Okay, so take a look at the engineer's side. Got some more safety warnings and um, small, very small detail on your vents back here. Once again, the truck detail that I was just explaining, the brake cylinders, the weight management system that they have right in here. Okay. Air reservoirs. Okay. Five gallon, uh, 5,000 gallon fuel tank and the caps painted red. Nice touch. The BNSF swoosh, didn't catch that BNSF swoosh right there on the side, nice. Road number 6839, got your ES44 down here. Got your F stencil here, got some warning labels down here on the side. And some more of some really good um, truck detail, okay? Now, the first issue that I see here just came across this one. You guys see those steps? All right. So maybe it's me, but I'm pretty sure I'm seeing that right. Looks like uh, this step here, the third one, it's a little bit out of whack. Looks like it's a little slanted in the camera. Yeah, it's definitely what it looks like. Definitely what it looks like. Um. But that is what it is. Now let's take a look at the front of the locomotive. Okay. Got your, I'm going to camera back a little bit. Got your MU cables here. Got your, oh, that's nice. Metal coupler. Pretty sure those are KDs, but this is a different. I haven't seen this one before. Still a nice one though. And actually here, you can see, you got your three MU cables, okay? Main reservoir, your actuating, and your a and R. And you have the train line air hose running right here. Okay? Now, that is one thing that I actually like that Inner Mountain does. Because a lot of people, a lot of manufa manufacturers just allow this, this um, magnet... Um, trip pin that comes on the KD couplers, they just allow that to act as a train line. And and on the real trains, there is no, uh, the train line does not come from under the coupler. It comes just how you see it here, right off the side. Just how you see it, just like that. That's exactly how it is, okay? Um, I understand why they have the KDs like that, but I've never really liked it because for some reason on my layout, these always get caught on something. Either it's a frog, on my layout now, so sometimes the screws, if it's on a curve and it just catches it just right. But these things catch frogs and they just cause me issues sometimes. So I want to give a little bit of credit to Intermountain for putting that train line air hose in there, brake pipe. That was a good touch. Moving up, got your MU cable, that's yellow. Got your cut bars, cut levers, however you want to call it. Um, handrail stanchions, ditch lights up front, okay, safety chain here in the middle, got a nose mounted headlight, you got grab irons leading the way up, got the BNSF swoosh, nice little door here on the, uh, on the engineer's side, get in, and looking at the, the nose of the locomotive, you got more grab irons, sand ferro hatches, windshield wipers up here on the windows, those are nicely done, and if I'm not mistaken, the number boards light up, but um, obviously the truck power's not on. We would have it short already. And then uh, the last thing we're gonna do here is take a look at the top of the locomotive. I'm gonna pick the camera up for this one and take a look at some of that detail. Okay, so you got your antenna dome up there and your um, silencers. I don't know the specific names. I'm pretty sure this is uh, the newer one of the new types of PTC. Most of the other PTC tops look mostly like that, but I have seen some PTC that's just like that, just the antenna dome and two sort of side antennas, if you want to call it that, on the sides. I have seen that as well. 
but moving back got lots of warning labels and whatnot on the top okay got your horn there in the middle got your exhaust stack smoke stack in the on the top as well more warning labels got some extra vents and grates back here and of course radiator fans and air compressor fans back there and whatnot all nicely done so I just wanted to show you guys that and I'm not sure if you can see it you can kind of see it there right there in between those 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 two little small fans and vents and the smokestack let me see if I can get my pointer right here you see that it's like a stripe that runs the dead center of the top of the locomotive for when the workmen have to get up there and do work around the top it's got safety tread up here oh yeah that's that's intentional safety tread back here okay safety tread back in there as well so yeah it's pretty much a stripe that runs this center so that if uh, you know a workman needs to get up there and do work they have safety tread they won't slip as easily if you know if it starts raining and also it's a small little handrail right here on the top once again nice touch by inner mountain okay so we've gotten all the detail covered everything from the locomotive unboxed now it's time to take a ear to some of the sounds take a listen to some of the sounds and see how she moves and then from there we're going to go ahead and wrap up this review all right so stand by by the way i just wanted to add this in before i forget this locomotive has got some good weight to it um it's not as heavy as um the walther's main line let me see no it's not as heavy as the walther's main line sc70 aces that i have it's not heavier than the uh mth katie that i got back there but it's heavier than everything after that I have. So when we get to testing out the pulling power, should be good there. Okay, so I just wanted to add that in standby real quick. All right, so guys, as I was getting ready to test out the sound, it seems like we have run into a problem. Out of the box, these are all dressed locomotive three. Just so you can see, it moves when I tell it to move. Change direction when I tell it to change direction. When we try to fire up the sound, which is function eight, per the directions, we get nothing. Now, just to show you that it's not my layout that's tweaking out. Oh, first, let me show you 6839. Doesn't know that because it's not addressed to that. Just so you just cover my bases. 9335 locomotive in the back. Function 8. So it's not my system that's acting up. Okay. That one here. Okay. Function 8. Bell. Okay. I'm going to turn you back off. All right. Okay. CSX. Function eight. Let's try this again. Locomotive number three. Wake up. Nothing. All I hear. This is weird little noise coming from the inside. Not even sure if you can hear that, but it seems to be an issue with the with the sound. And I don't know what it is. So gonna have to stand by why um I call up Intermountain and, and see what's wrong with this locomotive. Alright. So guys, that concludes this review. Hopefully in the real review, we can actually catch some sound and I can show you guys that and we'll go through the, everything, the bells and the whistles and pulling power and everything. And uh, But until then, um, obviously there's nothing else that I can do here. So with that being said, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this little review. Hope you guys enjoyed seeing um, some Jeevos on my layout, some Jeevos, one Jeevo on the layout. 
Um, I like it. Um, I just unfortunately we have this issue right now where the sound doesn't work. So uh, I'm gonna have to get that figured out and get that taken care of. So right now, um, it's gonna depend on how well Ender Mountain does with this process. If they do terribly, then this will probably be the last in, uh, Ender Mountain locomotive that I ever get. If it goes well, we may have some um, some hope for Ender Mountain, at least for me on my layout. So that being said, guys. I'm out. This is your boy, Flash Jones. Have fun out there. Be safe and be yourself. I'm out. Deuces. And yes, this is the DCC and sound version, not just DCC. All right, I'm out. Deuces.